In this video, you'll learn how to do the diagonal scotch stitch. The diagonal scotch is another box stitch that is repeated uh, with three holes by three holes. Here, I've done it with silk and ivory and silk lame braid to really bring out the different alternating rows. It looks really pretty when it's done like that. It's a stitch that moves pretty quickly and it covers easily. So for that, it's a great background stitch. It gives a nice texture and movement, so it's also good for um, treetops, clouds, mountains, or even articles of clothing. You'll begin with a single tent stitch. Then you'll come directly below your first stitch, and you'll skip over one hole and come down into that second hole. Then you'll follow this line and go directly beneath your second stitch and go one, two, drop down into that third hole. Then I'm gonna come next to where my last stitch was and go over one, drop down into that second hole, and then I'll come directly next to that stitch and I'll finish with a 10th stitch. And now I'm going to repeat the pattern with my last tenth stitch, counting as my first tenth stitch. So I'll come up or come directly below it, skip over one hole, drop down into that third hole, come directly below it, count over one, two, drop down into that third hole. And then I'll come directly next to that stitch, go over one hole drop down, and then finish the stitch with a tent stitch. So the pattern is a single stitch, a double stitch, a triple stitch, back to a double and then a single. So you'll just keep repeating this pattern with your last tent stitch starting as your first tent stitch in the next sequence. And like I said earlier, the box stitch that this creates is a three hole by three hole. So you can see that you have one, two, three holes down, and then you have one, two, three holes across. Now, when you're beginning your second row, your thirds or your, I guess, third longest stitch is going to line up with your shortest stitch. So we're gonna count down one, two, three, and this will be my longest stitch. And then it's flanked by two double stitches. So just one, two, one, two, and then it's completed on either end with a single, so just a 10 stitch. So your single stitches and your triple stitches line up diagonally and then your double stitches line up to diagonally. So you can see that last tenth stitch lines up with my third longest stitch from the above row. So I'll come next to that tenth stitch, skip over a hole, and then I'll come back, skip over two holes, So you can kind of check yourself as you're going because if you're not getting the pattern where your stitches are interlocking with your above stitches, you'll know that you're doing something wrong. It's important to pay attention to the tension of your stitches when you're doing a box stitch. Uh, the longer stitches will require a tighter tension than the shorter stitches. Reason being, the light will reflect differently on long stitches if the tension is incor incorrect, which can cause your stitching to look sloppy and um, the tightness to be off. So once you've completed a couple of rows, that is all there is to it. And like I said, try it with 
some silk and ivory or silk lame or other complementary fibers to give it a bit more movement.